And once again, I want to welcome you all to another meeting, another Kappa League meeting. Um, today is the second session for our health, uh, health education <laughs> topic. I'm going to share my screen and go through the agenda with everyone. Before I actually do that, somebody said that you couldn't type in the text, you couldn't uh, text in the chat box. So what I said was uh, when I was trying to chat, it either gave me <clears throat> the ability to chat to everybody or just to the host. So okay, I decided I, not I have to, to fix that next time. <laughs> okay, no problem. All right. <laughs> So I won't be able to visually see everyone. Um, so if brothers can just keep an eye out um, in terms of like the young men raising their hands or however that's gonna go, right? Uh, let me close this. All right, so cool. So good afternoon, everybody. Um, I just wanted to Go over the time frame again. I know we started just a little bit behind schedule. Uh, so we're gonna try our best to make, make it through the meeting and um, that formality part so that we can actually get to the topic and the portion where we have two guests, two guest speakers, uh, Brother Tardy and Brother Jones. They're gonna take over the portion about um, nutrition and performance. And so what I want to do is just go through our meeting formalities. And that's going to be kind of quick. So this is going to give you an idea, idea of what the agenda is going to look like. Okay. So <clears throat> I need a volunteer from one of our young men. Actually, I got you. Who said that, Tamir? Yeah. Actually, Tamir, pause for one second because is Arrington on? I think it's, no, Joshua. Is Joshua on? Right here. Okay, so Joshua has been chosen as the president. So Joshua Goodman, you're the president. So you're gonna read the president's portion for members portion I would like to have um, the vice president, but because Damir has seniority here in the chapter, in this particular chapter, call on another young man. I think Tamir, Tamir was the one who volunteered. So if it's okay with Damir, Damir, would you mind if Tamir uh, read the members portion? You gotta unmute it. Yeah, he can read it. Okay, I appreciate that. And then, um, okay. and then uh, we can have somebody volunteer to to do the invocation. Actually, the president will, uh, you know, nominate somebody for the rendition of the uh, invocation. So, Mr. President, Mr. Goodman, you can begin. Uh, this regular meeting of the Kappa League is now called to order. Indication will be rendered by. So now, what's the Genesis password? Damir Mason. Yeah. Um. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Um. God, thank you for allowing us to be. Thank you for allowing all this to be here today. Um, help this meeting go smoothly. Um, help everybody to have a blessed week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. What is the purpose of the Kappa League? The purpose of the Kappa League is to promote and develop the leadership potential of its members through participation in club-orientated activities and at the same time motivate them to raise their aspiration level. What is our pledge? 
I pledge that as a member of this Kappa League, I will faithfully and truly perform to the best of my ability and duties and responsibilities to uphold the objectives of good leadership development. This meeting is now open for the business that is to be presented to the membership. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So we're gonna talk just a little bit real briefly about January's meeting. And in January, this was the schedule of what it looked like for January's meeting. So on the 9th, there was a uh, national, the National Guy Right or National Capital mm -hmm. had their Zoom meeting. Um, there were 228 people who attended or student people who attended. Um, the subject was Black Lives Matter. And let's see. I want to click on here for a minute. I just want to give you a, a, a small portion of what they what that looked like, right? So I'm gonna send this video out. It's actually um, on um, Dropbox. Man, let's stop hurting each other and let's get it right, man. Today is the day we are gonna stand up for our community, man. If we could do this, we could do more. We just gotta continue on pushing and don't give up. The hard truth. Black men are two times more likely to be killed. A 2018 study in the American Journal of Public Health found that black men are two times as likely to be killed by police compared to their white counterparts. Black men are 21% more likely to have a weapon drawn. A 2016 National Bureau of National Economic Research found that blacks are 21% more likely to, than whites to be involved in an interaction with the police in which a weapon is drawn. So I'm gonna stop it there for a moment because um, the point that I wanted to just uh, briefly share with that is that the, meeting can, the meetings are supposed to be ran by you guys and so at some point, um, there's gonna be a conversation between the officers and the advisors and the meeting will be led by you all and we'll be stepping in as guest speakers, that sort of thing, right? So I just wanted to share that. In addition to, um, they're also pushing a hashtag campaign or social media hashtag campaign, KL or hashtag KL for BLM, Kappa League for Black Lives Matter. So in the next 30 days, if you're involved with anything that deals with Black Lives Matter, or you're wearing something, or you just want to hashtag it, make sure you hashtag it. On January 10th, we had our health education, our first health education session, and in which we talked about the eight dimensions of health. And these were some of those dimensions that we discussed, right? Environmental health, physical health, social health, emotional health, intellectual health, spiritual health, as well as, you know, we didn't really talk, talk about it, but sexual and reproductive health. And we watched a video about those topics. In terms of old business, and this is me just giving you guys the, 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 um, the report for the meeting, right? So in terms of old business, um, the financial report was given uh, during the last session and there's been about $800 plus in gifts that we've given out. Um, I have gift cards here noted because at the end of the session, sometimes you guys jump off before I actually get a chance to actually talk to you guys. So like, I don't know if Aldrick is on right now, but the last session, Aldrick had, um, had jumped off and I didn't get a chance to ask him, where would he like your gift card from, right? So the idea behind me having a conversation with you about the gift cards is because some of the gift cards actually cost the chapter about $5 to actually um, purchase, but then there's others that don't. So if I get you a, a gift card from Barnes and Noble, it, it's not gonna cost me anything, right? If I get you a gift card from the GameStop, it's not gonna cost me anything other than my travel, right? But if I get you a Visa gift card or something of that nature, it might cost the chapter additional $5. So 
I want you to just be able to think about and you know have an idea of where where you would like your gift card to come from, right? So if you're a gamer and you want GameStop, let me know. That's fine, right? But if you're not a gamer and you prefer, you know, again, Barnes and Nobles or some type of books or something like that, um, we can do that as well. Or, you know, even a Target card or a Walmart card. Those don't cost you anything, okay? And it's for $20, okay? Um, committee report, there's no committee report right now. The National Guide right is gonna have their first, uh, well, their February meeting on the 6th, which coincidentally is going to be our chapter meeting and our first, um, our first meeting together as Kappa Leaguers and as men of Kappa Alpha Psi. So we are inviting you all to attend our meeting on that Saturday. So carve out some time for that Saturday uh, we begin at 10 o'clock. I'll send out the notification for that once I get the, the registration link um, from one of our fraternity brothers, Brother Harris, um, but I'll send that out. Make sure you attend. There's gonna be at least 40 brothers, 50 brothers online um, on a call where we'll have an opportunity for you, know, you guys to actually meet, see some of our professions, have a conversation, watch our meeting format. Um, our, your vice president is going to be given a presentation about his, his company. And I want to just plug that real quick because I have, I have that actually up. So give me one second. Hold on one second. And this is not to steal any thunder from him. I just wanted to share, you know, this is his website. So he'll talk about it during the meeting, but just an opportunity to share his, his website, right? So like I said, um, I'm gonna move on. And let's present this again. So this is what's happening on February 6th. Um, it's at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So it should give you enough time to leave our meeting and then attend, be able to attend this um, if you're interested in it. Um, in terms of old meeting, excuse me, old business, was any to attend, any of you gentlemen, were you able to, to attend the January 18th presentation, Boys Will Be Boys virtual meeting, mentoring? Yeah, I think I was there. Okay, excellent, excellent. So please remember, you know, if you, if you attend it, you, you got to let me know, that way I can, you know, not just acknowledge your presence there, but the gentleman that runs these particular meetings, he's a, a friend of mine and a, a class of 89 member um, from Trenton Central High School. So um, I can talk to him about, you know, some things that can help you, right? <laughs> so you, uh, you wanna make sure if you're attending, just take a picture or something and get it back to me, okay? And then during our meetings, if you wanna give a, a brief, you know, commentary about what took place, that would be great. So if Tamir, if you remember, you know, being on with him, I wasn't able to attend that particular session, but if you were there, you can give us a little bit about what happened. That would be great too. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't remember what happened. I, I had a lot, I, I had a lot going on this week. Okay, that's not a me problem. And, me and my brother, me and Eli were there. So that what that was Tamir. Who was that second person talking? Josh. Josh, you attended the session? Uh yeah. Okay. I think I remember it a little bit. Um I think he was uh talking about how he wanted to be an engineer and he like 
I, I guess he like had a lot of like obstacles in his way. And um, like, for example, he wasn't taking the proper math classes to get to becoming an engineer. Okay. So he went to the library and read and read, got more knowledge about it. And he was soon be able to, being able to get to where he needed to be to become an engineer. So I okay. think it was just about if you know what you want to do, you just got to like work for it. Being able to persevere through ever, yeah. whatever the challenges are. Okay, excellent. And that, that kind of leads into this, this next thing that he's going to be doing. He's actually, um, uh, Bruce Boyd is his name. And he runs uh, Boyd Mentoring. Is his this is part of his uh, plethora of things that he does with the community. And this coming Tuesday, he's going to do a vert, um, a Zoom call, a Zoom meeting like this, where he's going to play this particular movie. But this is in an effort to uh, get men to read, right? So his thing is um, real men read, right? And so he's trying to align men and young men to join together to be able to read through a book. So they'll spend like a, a four, um, a month time, a month, a month, four week time period on a particular book. They'll go through the chapters and there's an opportunity for you to earn some money while you're doing this as well, okay? I thought it was a fantastic idea. It's a great movie. I just watched it last night and Joshua, um, when you talk about perseverance through, you know, the young man, the young man, what's his name? Uh, Nate Harris. Um, when you see these young men's story, you guys will be like blown away. It's actually playing on um, Peacock and on um, Amazon Prime. So you can watch it ahead of time or you can come and join us. I'll send out an email about it uh, for Tuesday as well. It's either Tuesday or Friday. Okay, so here's the election, election results. So we have President Josh Goodman, Vice President Damir Mason, Secretary Arrington Ryan, and Parliamentary Trent Etheridge. And I sent out the, the positions to you guys. I hope you clicked on it and made yourselves aware of the positions. This is just a reminder about Black History Month. So this is gonna happen on February 20th. Remember, you guys are gonna come up with the skit. That's if you take it on, right? You come up with the skit and you gotta let me know, let your president know and your vice president know, and they'll come back and let me know. And then we, as the adults, will perform for this particular day, this particular event. That's the way, that's the format that they're looking for because of the constraints that Delta Sigma Theta has on recording young people in video. So they didn't want that to happen. So they asked that the mentors and, you know, um, the adults actually do the skits, so. Mm. The art competition, I gave you guys notice at the last meeting, the deadline for submission was, well, is the 25th, right? So, I hope somebody participates in it if you're an artist, right? <laughs> That's the hope. So you have one day, right? Today's the 24th, you have one day to submit it. It's a great opportunity. And, and the thing about it, guys, what I've learned about um, offerings like this is that not a lot of people submit entries, which betters your, which betters your chance of winning. So submit an entry if you're an artist. Number four, Maplewood Oranges Alumni Chapter. They're gonna be hosting on the 30th, this coming Saturday, um, a conversation about COVID-19 and vaccines. So if you're interested, I just wanted to push it out there for you young men to participate in it because there's a lot of, you know, a lot of information out there, a lot of different views about it, personal views. I'll keep my personal view you can come here, find out from, you know, professionals, even Dr. Good, Brother Goodman, you know, there, there are sources that we have within a chapter that can help you to understand more about vaccines and COVID. 
So just throwing that out there. And that kind of brings me to our topic for today. Is brother, is brother Jones on? I know Brother Tardy, I saw him. Brother oh, Tardy, is I'm here. I'm here. Oh, both of you there? Okay. Yeah. So the topic today is gonna to be health education, of course, and nutrition and performance. And so I'm gonna turn it over to Brother Tardy and Brother Jones. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Let me know if you need something from me, good brothers. On I my think, end. I think I should be able to share my screen. No. Um, okay. you, might, you, have, you might have to make him a host, Hawk. Try, try, it try it now. Okay, I'm good. Okay. All right. Good afternoon, Brother Jones. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. And uh, Brother Tardy, before you before you get that started, um, thank you, Brother Jones. <laughs> and indeed, before you get that started, Brother Tardy, um, I just want to say um, good afternoon to all 24 participants in this meeting today. Uh, I'm happy to happy to see everyone, and um, I've really had fun in our last session. And I just hope that um, you all get involved and and just just gain one piece of information and just share one thing. Um, you don't have to um, share everything about yourself, but just share one thing and take one step closer to uh, just building with your your peers here. And so um, you all know me, my name is Ron Jones. I was on with you last, last week. Um, and so I wanna make sure uh, my brother Arthur has introduced that? himself. He's very new to the fraternity, but he came in working. Um, you got the floor, Arthur. Hey, Good afternoon. Yeah. Can I just chime in brother Jones and brother Tardy? Sure. sure. Just for a moment, because I did fail to mention that. I forgot to put that in my in my uh, presentation that on Monday, we actually had a day on, not a day off. And Brother Jones came in and walked us through an hour's worth of a warm up and uh, physical physical fitness um, a session. Right. And it was just phenomenal. Like I, my body paid for it the entire week, but I'm OK. I'm good. <laughs> that recording, I just uploaded it um, to our YouTube channel, and I'll push that out as well so that you can come back and take a look at it and, you know, even go through the exercises and, and just a phenomenal session. So I definitely want to publicly say thank you for that, Brother Jones. Really appreciate it. And I'm going to step back and let you handle it. You're, you're most, most welcome, good brother. Um, and I want to say to everyone on this call um, that behind the scenes, Everything is collaboration, leadership, and working together. Um, I'm proud of this young brother, Arthur Tardy, who is not that much older than you guys. Says Art, you're 24, right? 25. Yeah. 25. Not that not that much older than you guys. And um, and he stepped up as a brother in this fraternity, and he's here today to to assist you. So I'll pass pass it over to him. I appreciate that, brother Jones. So. Brother Jones mentioned um, it, it's just a continuation of what we did on on Monday. For those of you that missed out on there, um, as Brother Hawk said, you can go and watch the video. Definitely learn a lot because um, I'm into fitness too. But some of the workout that Brother Jones gave us, um, it was difficult, but we got through it, and I was able to adapt um, some of those um, during this week, and I plan on continuing that too. So for today, we're going to talk about nutrition and performance. And I want it to be like a village, right? So we are all gonna be learning from each other. So just because Brother Jones and I are presenting doesn't mean that you all, um, the rest of the, what we have here, 22 participants, we want y'all to be involved too. We, um, we wanna hear from y'all, we want y'all to share as well. So the overview of what we're gonna cover today, we're gonna go over some learning goals, um, do a quick little, icebreaker activity so we can get to know each other a little bit more. Um, and then we're gonna cover um, calories and micros and micro. Um, the thirst is real, so you're gonna learn about um, 
the value of drinking water and being hydrated. And then we're going to talk about protein, um, looking good, feeling good. And then we're going to, like I said, we're going to uh, recap everything that we went through. And hopefully you can share some stuff that you learned and you can provide some knowledge as well. So our learning goal um, for all 24 of us today is to understand nutrition fundamentals, right? So as a group, collectively, we want to define performance as it relates to athletic and basic activity, where it be, whether it be walking, um, running, swimming, um, playing basketball, you know, um, being on the golf course, all of that too. So um, we want to define what performance means to us and what it means to us collectively too. And we, uh, we also want to recognize myth and untruth about nutrition and performance. Um, so there are a lot of myths out there, um, be on the internet or word of mouth or just something you have heard um, from, from someone that, um, be it on television or on social media as well. And then we want to discuss um, topic specific to us, right, as black men. And then um, hopefully by the end, we can share um, some, some things that we retained through this presentation, as well as how we would like to apply this information to our life, right, moving forward. So to start off, um, I have a question for everyone, right? What is the best dish um, you can cook? So for me, I'm gonna start off by saying that um, my favorite thing to do weekday about five to six days a week is to make oatmeal, right? Um, I'm thinking I'm the best oatmeal maker in the world because I basically eat it about six days a week. So um, I like to play around with the different fruits. Um, sometimes I'll put berries, a different type of berries, bananas, um, oat milk, sometimes use almond milk because I don't, read, my body doesn't really break down dairy too. So that's one of my favorite things that I like to cook. Um, it might be simple to a lot of people, but it helped me get my day started. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a little bit. And, and then I'm just going to popcorn it around. So hopefully we can get um, everyone going by just sharing something that they love to cook. Whether it be, whether you like to make noodles or you like to make fried eggs, just share real quick. So I'm going to start with Trent. I like to make cheeseburgers. Okay. All right. Trent, now you got to popcorn it to someone else. Uh, Mark here. Uh, I like to make French fries and uh, what's the other thing? Pancakes. Uh, I popcorn it to uh, Amir. Um, I say the best, the my best dish that I cook is probably um sausage, egg, and cheese. Okay, I see a lot of breakfast people uh, I'll here. Go to um, Tom here. Uh, I know how to make sausages and eggs and burgers and cheese sticks. Oh yeah, popcorn to uh to Brother Hawk. That was funny. <laughs> so my my dish. And believe it or not, what I make best is rice. I can make some rice, boy. And you, you, and you will love it. I'm hey, just, what kind? Of, what what kind of rice? You know, we got to the rice. Specific. Are you yeah, talking about the rice. rice that sticks, or the or the or the rice, the Spanish, the Caribbean rice? Which one? Oh, my the my rice. rice is dangerous, no matter what it is, whether it's a side dish or a main dish, brother. So white saying. rice, white rice, white, brown rice, white rice, yellow rice, brown rice. It don't make no. Okay. It don't make a difference. I'm we gotta thinking. see if they stick to each other or not. That's that. That shows where you're from. <laughs> I, look, let's do a cook off. <laughs> nah, I'm good. I got a rice pot, a rice cooker. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go to uh, Mark. Mark Esser. I like to make eggs and sausage in the morning. I want to popcorn it to Joshua. I don't know how to cook. It's all right. Uh, I popcorn it to Dimitri.
Demetrius? I like to cook eggs and um, make pancakes. Um, I can popcorn at Takeda. Kaden, you there? Yes. There he is. What's your favorite dish you like to cook? Um, eggs. Okay, you want to popcorn it to someone else? Uh, Demetrius. I popcorned you. Oh. <laughs> you gotta pay attention. Hold oh, on, someone else, Kaden. Jaden. You say Jaden? Yes, he said Jaden, yep. All right. Um. I like to cook um probably like a grilled cheese sandwich. Um I'm a popcorn Kyrie Allen. I don't know how to cook anything. Okay, you, you wanna... can't you can't just turn your mic off. You gotta popcorn it to someone else, Kyrie. Can't hear you. Popcorn Cameron Allen. I can't cook. Um, who hasn't gone yet? Well, hey guys, hey guys, is that is that a uh, Cameron there? Yeah. If you can't cook, do you prepare anything? Do you put jelly on toast? Do you make ramen noodles? Do you? Um, or are you completely helpless and not preparing anything? So you don't have to know how to cook, guys. But maybe you know how to, you know, maybe if you get hungry, you just put some cereal together real quick. And Cameron, Javon didn't go, so call on Javon. Um, I like to, to cook eggs and pancakes. I'm a breakfast type of person. Even I, I even eat it at, at nighttime. Um, I'll popcorn it to, I don't even know who didn't go yet. I think Carter had his hands up. Who? Carter. Carter. Uh, I'll popcorn it to Carter. Carter, you Carter, you're on, um, you're on mute, buddy. Yeah, his he said his um his his mic isn't working. Okay. But he did oh. put in the chat that his dish is um chicken nuggets and fries. Oh, okay. Well, if I if you know, I just want to jump in here because I'm going to represent the dinner crowd by saying that I cook excellent cabbage that combines red, green, yellow peppers along with onions and I typically add a little broccoli and uh, sometimes I you know or my mushrooms and or um, smoked turkey um, for a little additional and my seasoning choices are amazing listen I, I should actually put it on the market that could probably be the way I get rich really seriously <laughs> it, is, it is that good so but that's my thing. I try to incorporate a lot of vegetables in every meal. For example, you guys talked about breakfast. Well, I make omelets that include mushrooms, the three uh, yellow, red, orange, or green peppers and, and onions, et cetera. So, and I try to incorporate vegetables even in my lunch. You know, when I make a sandwich, my sandwich, you know, like when I go to Subway, now that's them making sandwiches, but I make sandwiches similar for myself. So for example, when I go to Subway, the only thing I don't get 
is jalapenos. And they get confused every time because I have to point, I want, because they like to keep asking me, like, what else? And what, I mean, you don't have to ask me what else. Mm -hmm. I want everything except jalapenos because I like vegetables. I eat a lot of vegetables. That's why my skin is so smooth. And that's why I'm kind of smooth too. You know, because vegetables, you know, make you smooth. And see, here it is. Look at this. I'm smooth. So yeah, it's, it's a healthier choice. I had to throw that in because all that, you know, pancake stuff was wearing me out. Um, can I say something, brothers? Can I jump in? Go ahead. Hey, hey good afternoon again. Um, I just wanted to, if it's okay, if it's if it's possible, to ask maybe a couple of the young men. Um, I like to know what would they like to learn how to make. You know, because we understand their skills are their skills are kind of limited, which we understand. But what is a dish that they would like to make? You know, maybe just two or three guys can answer that. Um, I speak. Go ahead, Mark. You have the floor. Uh, I would like to learn how to make uh cake. Like I've made cake before, but I want to like make a full cake. A full like I want to learn how to make pound cake. True. Huh? <laughs> Old black women are good to get to know for that. <laughs> they know that. They know how to That's do tough. That. Anyone um, else? I'll go next. I'll go next. Um, something now I, I wanted to learn how to make is um stuffed salmon. Okay, and hey, that and, sounds real good. <laughs> and Damir is being modest, but Damir knows how to cook regular dinners, like real meals. He's being modest on here. But hey, guys, the Kappa Leaguers, the American cook real meals like Olive Garden type of stuff. Well. Salmon is one of my favorite things to cook too. So, all right, I'm gonna jump in. Uh, I'm a kind of a, a, a I can cook anything on the grill, but uh, my preference is a steak. <laughs> nice. Hey. I want to I want to learn how to make steak. Who's that? Tom here. Um. So I'll jump in, guys, and I don't know if it's my yeah, I think it is my favorite thing. Um, I like I like making smoothies. I think it's the easiest way to intake, you know, everything you're going to learn about. It takes 10 seconds to, for me to make it in my Nutribullet. It's easy to shop for. I just pick up certain fruits and vegetables, put the protein in, and it's very good. And I can drink it while I'm walking around or sitting down. And I don't need a fork and a knife. I I'm, I'm literally drinking a whole meal. So um, I think that's my favorite thing to make just because of how easy it is and, and all the benefits you gain from it. So. And One else. Hey, hey, young man, if you send a list of stuff that you would like to make, oh, this is Brother Gray. My, my, uh, my older brother is a chef. So if you send a list of stuff you would like to make, I can get the recipes from him. That's not a problem. Okay. Anything, any any type of uh, food you want, I got you. That's for the older brothers too, right? <laughs> Say, young men, older brothers, <laughs> older brothers got to put put some money into the pot. <laughs> young men, if you send it to me, I'm gonna go to Chef Google. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube is always another great resource. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Let's see one reply: grilled chicken. All right. All right, so I'm gonna gonna get back to the presentation. All right. Hey, so what is nutrition, right? So nutrition is the process by which humans take in and use food in their bodies, right? So we take it in, um, we eat, we play or go to work, right? Like you do some type of activity throughout the day and then you sleep. So it's all about like breaking down like the different nutrition in your body and how you go about eating that. That would make you perform, whether it be at work, um, at school, or uh, whether you play sports or any type of activity, right? And then it also helps you to get better rest. So the type of food you put in your body um, correlate to how, how you perform as well as um, the type of rest you're going to get during the nighttime. 
So like the basic of nutrition, we have um, micronutrition. We provide energy. We're talking about carbohydrates, um, proteins, and fats. And then we have micronutrition, um, which are vitamins and minerals, right? And then fibers, which is a form of carbohydrate um, that comes from plants. And then you have water too, which is um, essential part of your body because your body makes up about um, 70% of water, right? went too far. So speaking about carbohydrate, carbohydrates um, provide energy for daily activities. You can see here with the oatmeal, I just love oatmeal so much and it helps me start my day. Um, it's low in cholesterol, it's, um, it's filling too, so you get a lot of fuel in and then um, it just gives you a lot of energy to go out your day. So um, if you, I love breakfast, breakfast is important to me too. So like I always try to eat oatmeal. That's why I just I had to put this picture in here. So carbohydrate is also good, as I said, for you, um, it, it helps your mental function. So it helps how you, how you move, the type, the type of movement you're in, the type of energy that you have. So say, if you don't eat breakfast in the morning, you go to school, right? You're gonna be a little sluggish because you don't have a lot of energy um, to maintain yourself throughout the day. So carbohydrate is also needed for um, your heart to beat, right? Um, for your muscles to move, as well as your lungs to breathe too. So you need, you need these fuels in your body to keep moving throughout the day. And then um, the type of carbohydrate you put in your body too also helps you um, to make sure that you get the right amount of rest that you need at night. So about 50% of your daily calories should include um, some type of carbohydrate. And, and uh, Art, let me chime in on you with that oatmeal. Um, hey guys, oatmeal, is um, depending on what type you buy. Um, if you go to the store, your parents go to the store um, and you get like steel rolled or um, whole grain. Uh, but oatmeal is um, a complex carbohydrate. So when Art was mentioning energy, um, complex carbs, they actually regulate your energy throughout the whole day. So if you have a complex carb in the morning, it's ideal and uh, Art, that's probably where you're getting all your energy yeah. from because that will stick with you throughout the entire day, that one bowl of oatmeal. Um, so that's just a little um, tidbit I want to throw in there for you guys. Thank you for that. So um, some form of carbohydrate, right? So you have pasta, rice, fruit, dairy, and even like some type of green, um, some variation of green veggies too, right? So um, those are all forms of carbohydrate. And then you have glucose, which is um, what you need. So it's key to keeping your body working in top shit, right? So you wanna, um, as a performer or just as a human being doing different activities, right? You, you need energy to do, um, to do these activities. So you need a carbohydrate, um, which help with your glucose. We give you a lot of energy. And then you have your glycogen, which stores some of those energies too. So as you go throughout your day, you're burning calories, right? And then um, the rest that are stored, those are called glycogen. So um, if Brother Jones wanna give some input and I think um, anyone else that um, has some more experience with the different breakdown of glycogen and glucose that wanna share with the, um, with the young men still, they're more than welcome to do that. So with the calories intake, for example, you have, um, say you're consuming about 2000 total calories, right? In your body and um, you're burning about 2,500 daily calories, right? So you have that 500 calories um, to be used in either store, ca store carbs or fat, right? So ideally you wanna, um, you wanna consume, um, about 2000 calories, give or take on um, your weight and also your age too, right? So um, each person is different with the amount of calories intake, um, depending on um, how much activities that you're doing during the day too. But then um, as, you, as you do those activities, you're also burning down your calories um, intake. So now we go down to um, storing carbs and body fat. So some carbs are very good for you, right? Like um, as Brother Jones mentioned, like whole grains, 
and there. So depend on on your body too. I know a lot of um, black black people and color people because of genetics. Um, most of us cannot break down dairy, um, dairy, right? So you may not be able to drink um, regular dairy milk, but then um, there are supplements for those too. So you can have almond milk or you can have oat milk. For example, for me personally, I use oat milk um, because I my body just cannot break down dairies like that. So you have veggies, you have potatoes, you have fruits and rice too, right? And we want to try to stay away. I won't say like cut cut like the right side all the way out, um, wash out for words um, that start with C, right? So like candy and cookies and chips, right? And Coca-Cola soda, you wanna stay away from those as much as you can. I'm not saying get rid of it completely, but you wanna stay away from those, right? So um, you wanna use the good carbs, you, you wanna take in more of those good carbs, right? And then you wanna stay away from um, some of the carbs that are not so good for you that you can occasionally take in if, if you want to treat yourself, like having um, a few a few cookies or candies during the week too. You're more than welcome to do that, but just don't take a bottom of them um, in your body. It's not, it, it, it's just going to burn out your body a lot faster and you won't have that energy to sustain you throughout the day. So um, talking about fat, right? So um, fat really does not make you fat, right? So fat is essentially in the diet for both your health and athletic performance, right? So your body needs fat um, to provide energy and it's also served as an insulation to your body. Um, the, for example, the brain is nearly 60% um, fat. So fat also helps um, regulate um, like your hormones in your body, right? So um, the daily percentage of it that you want to take in is about 25 to 35%, but you shouldn't really focus on how many, um, like the percentage of fat or the amount of fat that you're consuming each day, um, as long as you cover up like the four different groups of food that you need in, um, for each meal. So you don't want to, for example, you don't want to skip a meal. You also want to eat at least three times a day and probably have a snack in between too. So um, balancing those things out, if, it, um, if you have your three meals and then you, during your three meals, you in incorporate the four different um, food groups in there, you're automatically going to be um, taking in that um, 25 to 35% of fat that, that your body needs um, to provide energy and to also insulate the body. Hey, um, hey Art, right, I'm going to add to that as well. And just to, um, just to kind of give everybody a historical perspective about the idea of fat. When you think of fat, what do you think of? When, when, you, when you hear the word fat, and any young man can chime in, what do you think of when you hear that? Bad. I think of like, Bye. you know, like Bye. big Bye. people. Right, there you go. Who said that, Mark? Uh, oh, I, I said, he did that, but I said in size, like, Okay. So yeah, do you think anything positive when you hear that? Uh, I, I do. Some, yeah, I do. When I sometimes when I think about fat, like I know, like when you eat, like there's fat. It's it's, it's bad fat, and then there's good fat. Excellent, excellent. So so that's good. That's good that you think that, right? Um, you know, fat has been branded to be this really bad thing. Even when you think of it, maybe a fat, maybe a big person comes to mind. You say the word fat, you might be thinking of like skin hanging off of somebody, but uh, but you actually need it. Any healthy any healthy athlete has a has a um, has a certain amount of fat that he or she must intake. Um, and so when uh, in the '80s, when we had low fat diets, '80s early '90s, that actually made the country fatter because they put everything else inside the food. Um, they put things in the food like, um, like aspartame that makes you want more carbs. So when you, that's when like McDonald's started supersizing everything, right? So you, you, you're eating a low fat diet, but actually everybody's getting fatter because nobody told anybody about carbs. They only talk to people about fat. So that's, that's like a, that's a, an era in this country where you had everything was low fat but the irony is everybody got fatter. So I'll pass it back to you. 
So, brothers, we have a question in the chat um, where Javon is asking, why do some people say carbs are bad? Okay. You want to um, want to tackle that, uh, Art, or you want me to tackle it? You got it, and I can chime in. Okay. So, um, so guys, when you think about carbs and when you think about calories, you got to just view it as like as money, money up, money down, money negative, right? When you think about carbs, some people say carbs are bad, is because they have too much of them. That's it. Carbs are bad if you have too much of it, because what happens is when your body is not using this fuel or when you are not, you could, you could look at it like fuel. If your body's not using this fuel, it's gonna turn into something that you don't like. So it's gonna turn into a belly or a hanging arm or hanging chin or something like that that you won't be happy about. So. But for other people like sprinters or athletes or like somebody playing basketball, it's perfect because it gives them the energy that they need to dunk on you. So it depends on who you're talking to. Absolutely. So I'll also add to that too, especially when it comes to performance, right? So um, like I said earlier, stay away from the sea, like the candy and cookies and stuff like that. But sometimes you will see... Um, like an athlete, um, an athletic trainer would give an athlete um, some chewy gums, right? That have a lot of carbs in it, right? So is that to help them fuel up because they're using so much energy, right? If if you're performing at a, at a high level, you, you need a lot more carbs. Like you see um, people like LeBron James and um, Lamar Jackson and them, right? They're, they're, they're using a lot more de- um, they're burning a lot more daily calorie than they're taking in too. So for that instance, they would need a lot more carbs, which is not bad for them. They, 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 they need that extra carbs, right? Whereas there are other people that have, um, they're taking in, they're consuming a, a lot of carbs, but they're not burning, they're not burning those um, carbs out, right? So as Brother Jones mentioned, there's end up being like, extra um, fat on them or like hanging bellies, right? Or they have like the loose arms and stuff like that too. So it all depends on the individual and how many um, calories or like the type of activities that they're doing as well. So, so brother Tarti, uh, sorry, just, just one more piece of information for the young men. Can, can you also talk about how this could also play in if you're doing an intense mental activity, right? Because that could also uh, if you're taking the SAT, or I know Brother Hawk can probably attest to this as myself, like when you are um, taking like uh, Brother Hawk has a motorcycle license like I do, right? But I was exhausted mentally and had to eat consistently while taking the, um, you know, during during the motorcycle course. So can you talk about that a little bit? So as he, so, so that the young men know, like if they have an intense mental um, event coming up, they're prepared for that also. Yeah, so when it comes to, can you guys hear me? Because I feel like I'm hearing myself. Can everyone hear me? Yeah, it's better now. See yeah, I can okay. hear you. Yeah, so um, when it comes to just like your your total body functioning at, at a high level, you, you need that cause, whether it be for studying or just going to class and being awake, right? So um, because like you're, sometimes if you're studying for an exam, like the SAT, or like the ACT or even like um, like final exams, right? Like your brain, your brain is working faster. Um, you're focused on stuff. So it's like you're burning energy and like just moving around too, right? So you need that, you need that carbs to help you stay awake, to help you focus. And then that also go uh, about like staying away from those um, C words, right? So you wanna stay away from cookies and candies, right? You want to eat um, whole grain stuff. You want to uh, you want to have some type of pasta that will fill you up and that will make you focus instead of something that's gonna make you crash in like thirty minutes. So while you're studying, right, you want to stay away from stuff like Red Bull, right? You want to stay away from um, you want to stay away from candies and um, creamy stuff because yes, it's gonna fuel you for like 25, 30 minutes, 
but then after that, you're going to crash right away. So that's something you don't want to do, as, especially when you're studying. You want to stay away from those things, if that makes sense. All right, and, uh, and Art, you know, you know, just to chime back in, man, once again, we discussed complex carbs. Those are perfect. That's perfect for, for concentrating, focusing. On the, on the flip side of that are, are called simple carbohydrates. And in simple carbs, it, the energy comes and goes. It's real quick. So, you know, I used to work out with this guy. He was, he was actually a bodybuilder and he used to drink a can of Coca-Cola right after his workout, um, which, is, which is a C, right? But for him, he's fully knowledgeable about his caloric intake, his carbs, his pro, he's fully, he's fully informed. So he knows how much sugar is in this. He knows that, you know what, I'm taking this right now because I'm going to get a quick kick and drive home and then I'm going to make my meal or whatever. But it was a very strange thing. He used to crack a can of Coca-Cola. But when you look at this guy, this guy was, you know, ripped from head to toe. Um, so you really have your fuel, is the kind of fuel you're putting in your body. And, um, you know, just to just chime in, my favorite carb is a, is a sweet potato. It's, a, it's another complex carb and you don't need to put anything on it. So it already tastes sweet and it's very good for you like oatmeal. That's a great, that's a great example too. I definitely love me some sweet potato, especially for dinner time. Um, right. If you're meal prepping too, you can meal prep it in several different ways that will last you throughout the week. So you can, you can bake it, you can roast it, um, you can boil it. So it's, um, you, you can just play around with that too um, when it comes to meal prepping. So um, moving forward to just fluid, right? Um, fluid is the important part um, of your body. Your body need, needs water, right? So factor that influence uh, f fluid requirement, um, your environment, right? So um, we exercising. So when you're um, in an environment where it says like when, when it's hot, right? Because your body is react, reacting to the heat, right? You want to take in um, a, a lot more fluid um, so that your body can be able to respond fun, right? The same way with um, when you're exercising or, or performing in a match or working out too, you want to consume fluid throughout so you stay hydrated and not dehydrated too. So um, uh, when not enough fluid is consumed, dehydration occurs. So you're talking about fatigue, you might be confused, right? Like um, your, your head might start spinning too because like you had, you're dehydrated and then you get fatigued. So I just want us to think about those three things, um, constipation, fatigue, and confusion, right? When it comes to um, hydration. And then I want us to have a conversation, right? Of why hydration is important for your body. Um, whether it be um, water, uh, um, sports drinks, um, um, soda, juice, everything, right? Whatever you put in your body to hydrate, um, why do you think it's important? I want us to have that conversation together just so we can learn about um, performing um, at a top-notch level each time, right? So that comes with being hydrated. So um, for the young guys, as well as for the brothers still, why is hydration so important for you or why is hydration important for all of us? Um, I think hydration is important because if you're not hydrated, then you won't be in the right mindset. And you, um, like a big example of that is like, if you're working out and you're not hydrated, you're going to end up getting a headache, and you're not going, you you're not going to be, you're going to be wondering why, like why you have a headache, it, but you're not going to be, you're not going to have the right amount of water intake. So without having the right amount of water intake, like your your body just won't work the right way. <clears throat> Um, wait, can I answer that too? Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, when you don't have the right amount of water intake, stuff like that requires water, like, like sweat, urination, and even, uh, blood flow. Cause if you don't have the right amount of water, then all that salt buildup will eventually head to your brain and make your head, uh, your brain expand. 
And if you don't have the right amount of water, then you, you're not, you're going to be mentally off your game and physically too. Good. Good job, guys. You also, if you, if you're dehydrated, you also experience uh, muscle cramps. So if you're working out or performing, you need to have water to prevent that. That's right. Yeah. And, and, and young men also have to understand when it comes to water, what's in water? H2O, oxygen. Oxygen is definitely a, a component that's needed in the body, not just through breathing, breathing oxygen in, but you also have oxygen within water. No doubt. And just, just to close out, just to close out here, um, you know, your body is very similar to um, like the balance in your body is like the earth's balance in terms of, in terms of water. Um, and I don't know if anyone ever um, went to give blood, right? They tell you to drink plenty of water. And if you, and if you didn't, you could see the difference in your blood flow when they're, when they're taking blood from you, you could see the difference. Um, and so water makes up about three quarters of our body. Everything that you have going in your body needs it. Your, all of your organs are operating um, using the water that's in your body, your brain. And so, um, you know, I read somewhere that if you have a headache, right, there's a 95% chance that is because you don't have enough water. That's a super easy fix. Um, and that just shows you how valuable it is um, to, to our bodies. I like to chime in on that one and that one specifically because um, there's studies that show uh, dehydration is one of the main reasons that um, academic success is not where it should be, right? If mm -hmm. you're hydrated, then academically, you will, you will more than likely excel a lot quicker, especially with water, you know, because like we've discussed, your body needs it. Your body is made of it. Your body is not made up of Gatorade and sports drinks. And, you know, your body will change juices into the, the, the you know, nutrition that it needs. But water is specific to helping your body. So you want to make sure that you have <clears throat> not, not a, um, uh, uh, you want to make sure that you have a very good alkalinated type water too, you know, because that matters as well. You don't want something that's, you know, low on the alkaline chart because that's just putting more acid. That's just like drinking, you know, a, uh, a soda or something like that or ginger ale. But if you have, you know, water that is up beyond say seven on the, um, you know, alkalinity chart, um, pH balance chart, then you, you're good. So I have a question. How much water should you consume a day? I think you should consume like a gallon of water a day. Okay. Very good. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, as everyone just mentioned, I think you all summarized it very well and um, you was able to get your point across. I think um, those things that you all mentioned really um, expand on the importance of water, right? So it regulates body temperatures, it dissolves minerals and nutrients to make them ac accessible to your body, right? So you talk about like the food and everything that you consume too. Those things cannot be broken down um, unless you are fully hydrated, right? So um, I know there's a lot of like um, push towards like sports performance drinks like Gatorade and Powerade and um, body armor, right? But water is the most important fluid that you can put in your body too. Like these athletes only use those things because they have um, sugar in them too that will also boost their energy. But then you consuming water on, on a daily basis, especially um, we all try to aim to drink that one gallon, one gallon a day, right? So you, you drinking that water allows you, um, allows for nutrient and, and oxygen to go to the cell, um, like um, Brett Wilson mentioned. Um, not just that too, it's, it, it also protect um, your organ, right? So it flushes out weights and product in your kidney and liver. So, um, and it definitely aid in the prevention of constipation, right? So it helps your body, it water protects your body and it also defend your body too. So um, 
it is very essential as um, Brother Jones mentioned. So we all should drink, um, we, we all should attempt to drink a little bit more water each day. And that's a challenge I want to give to not myself, but to everyone on this um, Zoom meeting right now, right? We all should aim to reach that gallon a day of water, right? Because I know it's hard sometimes. Um, we, we might go like a day or two, all week or even a month from, and then we start slacking off too. So um, that's a that's a challenge I want to give to everyone on here today. And 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 also, guys, um, you might wonder why. Like, okay, why why do they keep showing athletes drinking Gatorade, right? Um, <clears throat> the reason is because you know Gatorade has things in it like electrolytes. Um, electrolytes are basically all. Um, it's basically they help your cell function. They're electrically charged because we're walking around hot without a battery, right? So these things actually fuel us like, like a battery. So um, like Gatorade has electrolytes in it. Why? Because there's a such thing as losing too much sodium. So when you sweat and you actually taste your sweat and it tastes salty, your body is losing salt. And if you lose too much sodium, that can cause all types of organ damage. And that's something that people don't talk about. They usually talk about having too much salt. And so that's why drinks like a Gatorade or Powery are actually pretty popular among athletes and among coaches um, because they have electrolytes in it and sugars that, that actually supplement these, um, these athletes while they're playing a sport. Yeah, Gatorade is more of a performance drink. If you're sitting on the yeah. couch, there's no need for you to drink Gatorade. That's right. It's a, it's a performance yeah. drink which will replenish, you know, as Brother Jones says, certain nutrients that you're losing while you're playing. Like on a hot day, you know, you, you need to replenish your nutrients. But we do have a question in the chat um, which says, what if you drink too much water? So maybe one thing to do is, is I, I've um, Heard that a gallon of water was the target, so maybe we need to explain what how many ounces that is to give the young men um, the perspective of that. So I do have a question. Um, I know we were told back in the day it was eight glasses of water a day, which is about sixty-four ounces, right? I mean, mm -hmm. well, which, which is about half a gallon. That's half a gallon. Yeah, a gallon's one hundred twenty-eight. Right. So has that changed? Because it used to be. Well, here's, 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 the, here's the issue with telling people how much water they have to drink. It's, it's super different for every person because, because it's just like um, how Art talked about our caloric intake, right? Yeah. Some of us are sitting here only burning 1,500 calories a day, and you probably got some of these kids on here who, who could burn 3,500 calories without taking a walk, yeah. right? And so you know, we're going to require different levels of water and based on our, our habits too. So, so if someone has not been drinking water for years, right, and their body has been functioning off of what, well off of what they had, right? And I'll give you an example. Um, my, my dad, who's like 90, right, you know, um, has only drinks coffee, only drinks coffee. Doctor said, yo, you need to drink more water. He said, man, I'm older than you. How are you going to tell me what I need to drink? And so you lasted that long, you're 90 something. And you know, hey, maybe you're getting all the water that you need from that coffee. And so that's why it's, it's, it's hard to tell, you know, that standard was eight ounces. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, eight glasses, um, uh, brother Devin. Um, but you can't tell the same thing to somebody who's waking up running five miles in the morning and then going to the gym at 8 p.m. Gotcha, yeah. And I guess it's also based on body weight, if you're bigger. Yeah, there, there are some ratios that are out there that'll tell you if you weigh <laughs> X amount, you should drink Y amount of, you know, water a day. And I forget what it was. It used to be one that like if you, like Brother Jones just said, like if you ran, if you go out and you run five miles, then you should add another you know, uh, bottle of water to your intake um, to replace what you lost on that run. Yes. I do remember hearing that. So um, before I just turn it over to um, Brother Jones, I just want to point out 
here that um, there's a lot of pyramid. I'm sure everyone have seen is um, in school. Um, it gets updated each year too, right? So you want to have like um, like a balanced meal. You can pick from any one of these on the left side. And then I also include it here for people that, that are vegan, right? Or vegetarians, like these are the type of options you can have within your diet plan too. So um, you don't always have to um, consume meat to get your protein too. So you can get your protein from um, things like beans and legumes and um, nuts too, right? Um, those things have proteins in there. So you don't always need chicken and fish um, and steak. So um, you can definitely tap into your, um, to like um, seeds, nuts, even like your veggies too, right? All, all these things I hear can help you um, tap into the four different groups to get your balanced meal. So um, there are dairy substitutes here. Um, for example, like I said earlier, I drink oat milk instead of um, regular milk and it still provide me like the calcium that I need um, as part of my daily intake too. Rajans, do you want me to stay on this? Um, do you want me to just keep you into my slide? No, I'm gonna uh, share your... pass, you can pass it over to me. Okay. And I'll share, I'll share mine. Um, all right, so so um, just to just to do a nice transition from what Brother Tardy was saying into my material, um, just going to share my screen real quick, and um, it's a very very short video. I want you to check out. Can you all see that? One and only. Yes. Can you hear? Eat a lot of meat. Yes. yes. They show this commercials and steak. That's what a man eats. Selling that idea that real man eat meat. Serious man food. But you got to understand that's marketing. That's not based on reality. I've been teaching fighting techniques to government agencies for more than 15 years. Then I got injured. Unable to teach for at least six months. I spent more than a thousand hours studying science on recovery and nutrition. I stumbled across a study about the Roman gladiators. The gladiators were predominantly vegetarian. How could the original professional fighters be so powerful eating only plants? When I made the switch to a plant-based diet, I qualified for my third Olympic team. I broke two American records. I was like, man, I should have done this a long while ago. When I went plant-based, I wasn't sure if I was going to survive. And I actually became like a machine. One of the biggest misconceptions in sports nutrition is that we have to have animal protein to perform at a high level. That's just... All right. So I just wanted to show you a clip of that. Um, so that it can lead into what I want to talk to you about. Um, and so, you know, we, we said that we would debunk certain myths, right? And so that's, that's kind of what I want to lead into in with. Uh, did anyone see that documentary before? No? Okay, so I want you to check it out. It. I've heard of it though. Okay, listen, is you- once Wait, you can you say it again, please? It's called The Game Changers. Once oh, you start it. watching it, you're gonna you're gonna really you're not gonna stop. You're just gonna go straight through. But it it actually destroys everything that we think we know about nutrition and protein, right? And so um, that the some of the top performing athletes ever, not just in the world currently, like ever, were vegans and are vegans. And so it, it actually, um, as, Ar as you saw Arnold Schwarzenegger in the beginning talking, he was like, you know, you, we, we're taught to think that certain things are manly. So when we know people who can grill like Brother Gibbs or like, or like my brother Mo, who say, yo, I throw this on the grill. You, you know, you go over there, it sounds like a manly thing for us, for us men and for you young men, right? But when you watch the documentary, it's actually the opposite when you look at performance in the athletes. 
not even just, um, you know, performance in that way, um, but there's other types of performance that they were talking about. Um, so, so definitely check it out. It might be on Netflix. Um, I think I caught it on Netflix, um, but it's going to, it's going to blow your mind. Um, and so I just want to um, share um, my screen again. Um, so I can go into this PowerPoint. Uh, so I used to use the desktop version. Okay, so can everyone see this? Yes. Yep. All right. So <clears throat> this uh, this guy here you're looking at, uh, this, you're probably not familiar with him, but he's a he's a gold medalist from from the UK, and you know obviously he's ripped. He's like a ripped dude. He's hanging from the bar with one arm, uh, but he you know is a track track athlete. Um, and so anybody in here who's an athlete, I know that you spoke about protein, right? So, um, so I want to talk to you a little bit about that. Okay. Um, so what is protein? Protein is basically, um, Brother Tardy talked about macronutrients, and that's what it is. And it's a building block of muscle. Um, so we're talking about things like, um, like fish, lean meats, eggs, dairy products, nuts, peanut butter, stuff like that. Um, but the misconception that we have that's all actually wrong is that protein comes from animals. And it doesn't. So you might think that protein, you know, protein comes from a cow or it comes from a chicken or it comes from the fish, but it actually doesn't. So protein comes from plants. What happens is when you eat those animals, those animals have concentrated um, partial compounds of protein in it. So you're actually not getting the full protein from the animals, um, but they have concentrated levels in it. So that's why somebody says, oh, you eat a, ham you eat a hamburger, you'll get 40 grams of protein or whatever. And as opposed to, you know, eating some spinach and, and, and it being um, something very, very low to, to none. And so um, so that's the misconception. Protein comes from plants. Animals eat plants. We get a concentrated version, but it's not a complete version. All right. And we'll talk, we'll talk about that uh, a, a little more. But when you think of the, the biggest, largest, strongest animals in the world, when you think about like an ox or a horse or, I mean, anything else that, that was used to build this country, right? They're all gigantic, muscular, and vegetarians. So, um, so that's where protein comes from, okay? I want bigger muscles. That's what everyone says. You say, I want bigger muscles. How do you get them? All right? So, um, so before that, there's a plant called quinoa. I don't know if anyone ever had that. Um, but that's an example of getting a full, getting complete full proteins. So complete means nine amino, nine amino acids. And so, um, so eating plants like quinoa or eating meals like quinoa um, can give you a complete version of this protein that you can't get from animals. Um, and so I want bigger muscles. So you got MPS and you got MPB. MPS, muscle protein synthesis, all right? So MPS is when uh, protein is basically produced to repair damaged muscles, all right? So you take protein so you can work out and, you know, uh, Mark, I saw you in the gym, right? No, who did I see in the gym? Was that you? I saw somebody in Planet Fitness, one of our, one of our cap, our cap of nights. Um, but, you know, same like he had gotten his weight up. And, and so when you talk about protein synthesis, right, it's the opposite of protein breakdown, all right, which is muscle protein, um, which is basically 
you losing protein after an exercise. So there's a thin line between losing and gaining muscle after you work out. It's a very thin line we play. The thing that can help you to gain is by eating protein right after your workout. That is one of the, um, that's one of the things that changes you being able to develop muscle. So if you work out, work out, work out, work out, right? And you're not taking any protein and especially not right after the workout, you can actually be losing muscle. All right, so I just wanna put that out there. Um, so there's also such thing as having too much protein, uh, which can lead to dehydration, calcium loss and kidney problems. So it is a big myth that you have to take all of these grams of protein per body weight per pound. It is a big myth. You probably need about 40 to 60 grams of protein after a workout, all right? Um, so moving on. Be a Flintstone kid. Anybody ever take these vitamins when they were kids on here? I know I did. Me. Yeah. You too, Joshua? Yeah. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, be a, be a Flintstone kid. And I say that, you know, it's just, it's, it's a joke. But it's, but it's kind of serious because we, we're gonna talk about vitamins and minerals real quick. All right, so water soluble vitamins, water soluble, soluble. Basically they're packed into watery portions of food and they're absorbed into your bloodstream and broken down during uh, digestion. So that would include things like biotin, folic acid, diamond, B6 and vitamin C. Fat soluble, they enter through your intestine walls and they travel alongside proteins. So that's gonna include things like vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and K. Trace uh, major min minerals. Your major minerals are gonna include your calcium, chloride, magnesium, phosphorus, and potassium. We'll get into some important ones in a, in a bit. And your trace minerals are gonna be very, very tiny amount, like something that you can fit inside a thimble. You might not even know what a thimble is, but you know, like a bottle cap, smaller than a bottle cap. Um, but they're super important for you. And that's going to include things like copper, iron, and zinc. Okay. Um, antioxidants, you hear that all the time, but what actually, what is it actually? Okay. So antioxidants are compounds that counter unstable molecules that damage your DNA and other cell parts, all right? So can anyone give me an example of something that has antioxidants in it? Berries. Berries, exactly. So we're talking berries, something like that will have antioxidants in it. Um, moving forward, vitamin, vitamin B, real quick, I'll say one thing about each, each, each item here. Vitamin B is also called thiamine or thiamine right? And um, they can be found in whole grains, black beans, and peanuts, but they break down carbs and amino acids in your body. Uh, these are some critical vitamins that you need to pay attention to. Vitamin B6, they break down foods um, and they help, they help the nutrients get into your body. So we're talking about uh, vitamin B6 can be found in chicken, pistachios, chickpeas, lentils, bananas. B12, um, they help with your nerves and your blood cells. They help give you energy. They help fight anemia. Um, and they help restore genetic material in your body. Just think about that. So this, this vitamin helps restore and strengthen your genetic material. That's huge. That can be found in seafood, um, meats, actually mainly animal products, okay? So most uh, people who choose to be a vegetarian, if you wanna get B12, if you're a vegan, you're probably gonna have to take a supplement because it's gonna be something that you find in animals. Um, calcium, calcium uh, is good for your nerves and your bones. You can find that in things like collard greens, uh, milk, cheese, OJ, vitamin D. Anybody know anything about vitamin D? All right. Um, I saw you shake your head. Is that Mark? What you what you know about vitamin D? I know it's very important that you get vitamin D. Okay. 
Uh, I for, I forget uh, what contains vitamin D, but I know it's very important to get. It. Okay. I think Doesn't vitamin D like, sun? it regulates the calcium in the body? Okay, my man, what's that? Tamir. Tamir. Yo, Tamir, my man. So Tamir and and uh, Mark, you know, good stuff. Listen, vitamin D. Here's this. Here's the secret about vitamin D in black people. Did y'all know it was a secret? So. The secret about vitamin D in black people is that many times in the winter, we are vitamin D deficient. And you go to the doctor and you know, your doctor might not tell you it's because you're black. They might not tell you that, but they might just say, oh, you're vitamin D deficient. I don't know why. But the reason you're actually vitamin D deficient is because of your, the melanin in your skin and, and the sun requirements that we have as a people. So the main way to get vitamin D is through the sun. In the wintertime, you start staying in the house more so you're not outside, right? So our natural habitat is near the equator. That's where our people are from. And so it's plenty of sunlight. So in the wintertime, we all get vitamin D deficient. Why is that bad? As Tamir said, vitamin D helps you bring in calcium, right? So you look back in history when you have people who are migrating around and you have uh, people of color moving into cold climates, the kids had bone disorders. Yeah, um, can it, like, it can lead to, like, um, loss of bone density and, and stuff like that? Exactly, and you, you can literally start having kids that have those disorders. So um, so that's why it's huge. I mean, just think about that. We should, know, we should all know that fact. Um, being Black, we should all know that. Um, and so that vitamin D, you're going to be deficient. So many of us in the wintertime take like 5,000 milligrams or whatever it is, or 3,000 just to get a little bit from a pill. But if you go outside and start taking walks, you'll get your vitamin D. All right. So that's a secret there. Iron. Iron, iron helps um, transport oxygen throughout your body. That's huge. For anybody who's working out who think you're strong, if you're not taking in iron, you're going to be much weaker. Iron actually transport, transports oxygen. So your best athletes are getting, um, your most effective, efficient athletes are getting um, maximum amounts of oxygen into their muscles and their bodies while they're working out. All right. And um, last but not least here is niacin. And, and so niacin is going to um, also... Um, help to support the um, your organs. And we're going to be looking at like poultry, peanuts, brown rice, grains. Um, niacin gives you, gives you energy, um, supports organs, digestion, and nerves. So these are all important things that if you're, if you're looking at um, becoming, um, strong, becoming stronger, working out, you might want to look at this list of vitamins right here. It's only se seven of them right there. All right. Discussion, do I need, do you need supplements? Do you need supplements? Anybody here ever took, um, ever took any supplements? Talk to me. You yeah, guys? I think so. We, I think we need supplements. You think so? Who's, who's that, Tamir? Yeah. Okay. All right, anybody else? Well, you know, I'm 58, man. I almost want to go line my supplements up to show the group, but I don't want to scare the young guys. Like, am I gonna have to take all of this? No. There are some there are some supplements, um, you know, that are associated with men's health that I do take because uh, I'm, you know, I get out, I walk, I do different things, but I I certainly feel better because I've I've lacked so much for so many years. So these are all, they all come from GNC. They're all, you know, pretty natural. So, um, and, and again, I'll, I'm probably going to take a picture of those just for the, uh, for the, you know, for the brothers, you know, I may post it in our group me because um, some of them may just, you know, they'll see the labels and go, yeah, these, these could be good for me. But uh, when I was younger, I was a, I was a Flintstone kid because um, I was an athlete. So I, I, you know, I basically took vitamins and I did drink a lot of water. But now, yes, supplements, yay. Okay. Hey guys, I, I knew a, um, a, a Olympic track athlete 
And he told me that his coach used to slide in his hotel room, used to travel the world running. And his coach used to slide about 12 pills to him per day that he had to take. And it was a normal part of his routine. Um, and what was happening is he, they were overtraining him, right? They were, they were, they were, um, you know, burning, you know, burning calories crazy with his body, um, you know, stressing his muscles out. And so it was really unrealistic. It was an unrealistic lifestyle. And so they had to supplement, which means basically to add on because you don't have something else. Right. So the, the answer here is, do you need, do you need supplements? It depends on what you're doing. And it depends on your current diet. If you have a well-rounded diet, you might not need supplements. If you're eating plenty of protein, you might not need to take any protein and with your, um, you know, in with your shake, you might be good. So it depends on the person and what you're doing. But the word supplement means to help out, right? So if you don't need help, then you don't need supplements. All right, any comment on that? Okay. That is absolutely right on, accurate. Yeah. There were things I lacked, that's why I need them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, just, you know, because. Like to your point, whatever those things that were missing made those necessary just for me and my individual situation. Cool. All right, looking good, feeling great. I'm gonna, you know, shout out and give an RIP to to this gentleman on the screen. Anybody know his name? Chadwick Bozeman. Chadwick Bozeman. That's right. So um just wanted to, you know, add his picture here as a little tribute but looking good, feeling great, okay? So we talked about nutrition, but how does, when you apply that nutrition to your lifestyle and it impacts and it influences how you look, right? That ties into your performance as well. So body image and self-esteem are closely linked, okay? People who are confident, people who have self-esteem, they participate, they'll sign up for sports, they'll be more active. Um, and so that is that is a fact, all right? Um, love yourself regardless of media images, okay? So what looks good, what you think you need to look like, right? You have to come up with that measurement, okay? You can't walk around, everybody's not gonna walk around looking like Arnold Schwarzenegger, all right? So healthy attitude, independence, and self-care. What does that mean? That means that, as I walk around, I'm being mindful of who I am and that this is my body. I'm, I'm becoming independent of my parents. All right, guys, right now you might eat just what your parents make, but when you go to college, now you have to gain this independence. You have to gain a healthy attitude and you have to care for yourself. That means just like my brother Art is saying, yes, he loves eating oatmeal. He's not mentioning, like, probably the main reason he's eating oatmeal is because it's one of the healthiest things he can do. I'm sure he's not adding sugar to it. And he likes to work out. When did he gain that independence? I don't know. Probably wasn't like okay. that when he was a teenager. Absolutely not. Can I just share a little bit on that? So regarding just, like, body image and self-esteem, right? So when I was younger, I mean, I still suffer from acne right now, but... Um, and like me discovering myself is drinking like drinking more water right exercising um trying to know like which food is good for my body which food isn't so it's like um i was able to go to my dermatologist to talk to them about my body right and then noticing that dairy wasn't good for me because when i consumed dairy i was breaking out but i still love pizza right so I, I would go and eat it and then my body would break out so it's like me staying away from those things like like growing my body physically and then that um has some type of impact on like my self-esteem so like staying away from those things and then eating things that are that are good for your body that help you um not just gain energy too but like how you look and how you go about yourself too that's very important for everyone to discover about themselves thank you thanks all right set goals and execute Okay, there's, there's confidence that comes from executing, right? So if I say, you know what? I wanna lose a pound by next week. If I say, 
I want to, um, last week I did 245. This week, um, or two weeks out or three weeks out, I want to do 255. Every time I execute that goal, I gain confidence and I feel better, right? So when I feel better, I perform better, okay? Take ownership and control over you. This is your vessel. This is your ship. You have to live in this. So therefore, it is not your parents. As much as they're going to say, yo, I made you, I brought you into this world, you have to maintain your vessel and your ship. Um, and bounce back from disappointment. If you fail and you bounce back, it's something called resilience, right? The most successful people in the world, they just keep getting up. Everybody gets knocked out. Everybody gets knocked out. The most successful people just keep getting back up. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna move on. Um, what can you do? All right. So here's the thing. What can you do? I'm just a kid. My mom makes this for dinner. My dad makes this for dinner. What can I do to change my own health, right? It's a good question. So answers, anybody, what can you do from your current position to impact your health? Start eating healthier. Uh, start watching what I eat. Okay. Go what? out for jogs or runs. Who said that? Josh. Hey, Josh. Good, good, good suggestion. Um, good suggestion. And, and even uh, people who said, watch what you eat, watch what you eat. Good suggestion. Also, what, what are you going to do if your parents are the ones shopping? What can you do in that situation? You can ask them to buy stuff for you to um, eat. You can ask them to buy particular things that you might want to eat. Excellent. Excellent. Um, anybody watch NFL? Anybody can say yeah. You could just say yeah. We talking. Yeah. Yeah. You ever anybody ever notice how uh, the trainers on the side give the, give the athletes bananas? Sometimes you ever see that? All right. So it is it's a fact. So when the when when a lot of the athletes go over on the sidelines, um, the trainers will give them a banana. Why? Because it stops cramps, muscle cramps. It has potassium in it that they need. Um, and so that's just a, a simple idea. And maybe you could tell your uh, your mom or your dad, your parents and say, hey, you know, can you bring me back up um, some bananas um, or some strawberries for some antioxidants, uh, yeah. something like that. Yeah, I think sometimes you may even have to, if there's been a habit, which, which had to happen with me, because at one point there were someone living with me that knew that there were certain things I used to like a lot. For example, you know, Pringles or whatever it was I used to eat. Sometimes it's it's excellent. Sometimes it's asking or or just even saying, well, you know, you really don't have to get me A, B, or C anymore. You know, so instead of the Pringles, you know, could you bring me some bananas? Because I think a, a, a big challenge I, I even recall as a teenager was to, to uh, Brother Jones's point, I wasn't the one that was doing the shopping. So uh, my mother just noticed when I started running track um, in the high school that there were certain things that stayed on the, in the cabinets longer because I, I just didn't eat it anymore. Because I, I learned some things and knew that that wasn't going to work for me. So, you know, she finally figured out, oh, well, you know, you know, I bought you Doritos. I'm like, well, you know, that doesn't really work, you know. So sometimes it may be that. Yeah. Nice. Right, thank you. And brother. also, I think, um, figuring out what makes you sluggish when you eat them, that also helps too. It also ch change your habit. So it's like certain food that you know that as soon as you eat it, you become sluggish, right? You don't want to do anything. You just want to go to sleep. Maybe um, those type of food aren't so good for your body, right? Because then you're, when you eat, you're supposed to be more productive, not sluggish. So um, think about foods that it's hard for your body to break down and things that make you sluggish as well. Hey brothers, I, I had to jump in real quick because um, we're, we're way over the time and I really do appreciate the presentation and pre presentation in itself is really robust, um, but out of respect for the, the students time and other brothers time, like we've lost four people already and I don't want anyone to jump off before we actually stop talking about what's next up and doing my will of names. So 
If there's one last statement that you would like to make, Brother Jones and Brother Tardy, you can go ahead and make that statement. Um, but otherwise, if, if you're not speaking right now, just those two have the floor. If you can mute your microphone, that would be great. And then Brother Jones, you have something else you want to add? Um, no, you're giving, you, you, you giving anything out today? Because I, I got some questions. I got a question or two. Yeah, I, I, I am. Um, so how many questions you have? How many you need? Because I got a couple. So I tell you what, I mean, it's, so here's the thing, right? My will and names is really built on participation, right? And so right now, I can tell you who my top runners are, right? I have the people that are, of course, in attendance, but my top runners are Mark Holmes, Joshua Goodman, Damir Mason, and Tamir Porter. And believe it or not, Javon Jones is in there too. And so- Wait, what did I do? So here's what happens. Throughout this meeting, throughout our meetings, I'm keeping track of who's making comments and participating. The goal, gentlemen, young gentlemen, is to get you actively engaged in the meeting, right? And so when there's questions asked, when there's, you know, um, when there's questions asked, when there's conversation that needs to be held, if you're participating in that, I'm putting it down and I'm jotting it down and I'm, I'm putting tally marks next to the names, okay? So I take attendance, I put tally marks next to the name for those that are participating. And then when it's time to look at our, um, at our will of names, those names get additional submissions. So for example, right now, right now, this is the way it looks, right? So I have, Damir has three entries. He's about to get another one in there. Actually, Damir, Mark, and Josh, and Tamir, they're about to get another, another entry in here um, just for their participating, you know, just because they're participating, which means they get their name put up here more times than once, right? So mm -hmm. when I'm asking Brother Jones how many questions he has, if he's gonna give me two questions, and that's, that's what we'll do. So we have five slots for 25, excuse me, $20 gift cards, right? So here's what I'll do. <clears throat> I'm gonna spin the wheel three times. I'm gonna shuffle and spin the wheel three times, but you can ask two questions. And for the participant that actually can answer it and answer it correctly. So choo choose wisely on your, your question, right? Um, the participant that can answer questions then you know, we'll allow that person to win from, you know, that $20 gift card. So why don't you ask your two questions, actually hold, hold in your questions just for a minute because I just want to breeze through something real quick. So just to give you a reminder about next month, next month is our, um, is February, Black History Month. On the original calendar, I did have a meeting scheduled for 214. I took that out. That's Valentine's Day. That's my anniversary, believe it or not. And I will not be here with you on that particular day conducting a meeting. If another brother would like to, if you guys want to do it, you can. That's on you. But for me, I won't be here. Not okay. Here. So we have the six, which is our fraternity meeting and our Kappa League meeting. You guys will be joining us for that day on the 20th is the DST annual Black History Month program. And then the final meeting is on the 28th for, um, for February, okay? So I just wanted to share that out and then we can go to the will of names uh, after Jones, Brother Jones asks his, his two questions. And, and Brother Hogg, if you wanted to give something out based on uh, participation, I think those, you know, those those young men earned those slots up there. You know, maybe the questions could be something different. I don't want to inter inter intervene with your process. Okay, I mean, it's so so. You watching me? Everybody's watching me. Put the names in, the additional names in. Um, I can spin the wheel five times, or I can spin the wheel three times. It doesn't. Uh, Mark. 
And then I know some of the young men have, have dropped off okay. already. Mm -hmm. Mark, Josh, Damir, and Tamir. Did I get everybody? All right, so for the remaining, I know Carter dropped off, but he was here, so I'm gonna leave his name here. Mm -hmm. Is Trent still here? All right, so I know he was here, so I'm gonna leave him. Cameron and Kahari, you still here? Elijah, is he here? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mark, Mark, uh, Joshua, Damir, Jaden. Am I missing anyone that's present that's in the in the room? Do I have everybody that's in attendance? I'm here. So everybody, um, all right, so I'm gonna shuffle this one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I'm going to spin the wheel. Nice. Okay, so Trent, Trent actually wins. Hey. Where's Trent? Trent around? He, he signed off. All right, so that's one winner. off also is mark mark yes is still there all right okay i'm gonna remove him Thank you. Nice. Wow, that was close. <laughs> Thank you. That was real close. Last one. Okay, so listen, so that means, well, Trent is not here, Esther is not here, Holmes, what's your preference for your, your gift card? Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter? I go, I go everywhere. Okay. Uh... Damir, you have a preference? Um, no, I don't have a preference. Okay. Tamir, you have a preference? May I please get a $20 Amazon gift card? Thank you. Okay, cool. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll get all five of you Amazon gift cards. <laughs> <laughs> that was the easiest money y'all ever made. I tell you, and, and again, I want to just repeat, if you participate in the um, the boys' uh, meetings, he gives out money as well. So I don't know if his is like ours, but you can actually win money from there too. So um, if there's any good, for the good of Kappa League, if there's any young men that want to share something that's good that's going on in your world right now, this is your opportunity to do that. If you, if there isn't anyone, then I'm gonna with, withdraw from my um, advisor statements because I know we're well over time period, over the time. 
Um, I just want to open the floor for you guys to share any good news. So if you have any good news, now is the time. Uh, I got a chance to uh, retake a math test that I got 100 on when my okay. math was low. Okay, awesome, Tamir. Nice. That's what's wonderful, up. wonderful. Anyone else want to share some good news? Uh, I just want to say I wish you all a good week. Okay, thank you for that, Mark. Appreciate that. You as well, Mark. So listen, before y'all chime out, we're, we're as a uh, organization, we're thinking about getting back involved in, in the um, in the golf, and I think it was golf, it was tennis. Was it tennis? Tennis. Golf. It's golf. 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 So, first tee. First tee, yeah. So we're thinking about getting back involved in, in first tee. So we're going to be looking for some names. I know, Mark, you really enjoyed, um, you know, going to going to first tee and participating in that. But um, it's really about exposure, gentlemen. So, you know, when we put these activities together and put them out there, please get involved, right? Please get involved because you never know. You might, you might find yourself liking uh, a sport or an activity that might, you know, you, know you, you might excel with, right? So um, on that note, I'm gonna allow you guys to go ahead and sign out. Brothers, if you wanna stay, you know, you can stay on for a couple of minutes. Um, but for my young men, thank you for being here. We look forward to you blocking out your time on February 6th. Remember, February 6th, we start at 10 o'clock, okay? So be prepared to come into the meeting at 10 o'clock in the morning, and we'll do our best to make sure that, you know, we'll, we'll try to keep it within the time frame of, you know, from 10 to 12, so you guys can try to jump onto the National Guy Right um, meeting that happens at one o'clock okay so thank you guys for being here appreciate all Good of you job. enjoy your enjoy your week thank, thank you. you all right take care see y'all later take care young men good job good job um yeah. brother huck i just i have something to say yeah yeah go ahead personally i feel like i was the first one on <laughs> okay, okay. listen <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. Fight, fight for no, yours. Fight no. for yours. <laughs> Cause listen, right? Go ahead. The meeting didn't start up until like two fifty, right? Correct. So, so I was I was already like loading up the meeting at like one twenty. So like uh oh. So Wait, like, you jumped on at one twenty? Uh oh. Starting not to sound real no. now. No, yeah, I did. <laughs> not 120, not 120, like 130 or 140. Because my mom was like, my mom called me. She was like, oh, we have Kappa today. And I was like, oh, let me just load this up. But it was like saying that the I couldn't join the meeting because the host hasn't started it up yet. So I couldn't okay. join. But I was loading in for like, as since at like 130 or 140. So so you what time, the time you really mean is 230 or 240 because we, we started at, we started at three o'clock. So I, I get what you're saying, though. So I'll take that in consideration, though, Tamir. Okay. Have, okay. A, good, have a good week. Good job, I'll see Tamir. you on February 6th. Yes, sir. Good job, Tamir. Thank you. Jaden, did you have anything that you needed to share? I think Jaden... Jaden... Uh, Went to the bathroom? Yeah. You want to stop the recording, bro, Hunt? Yeah, I, I, I wanted, I'm stopping it right now. I wanted to just make sure I got all of them out. That's all.